14. Corpse Discipline The old Prussian army had a favourite expression, croaked Krieg Slater, leaning heavily on his cane. Corpse Discipline. The kind of discipline that makes a corpse jump to attention. As you see, Doctor, I have achieved it. The Doctor looked round at the little semicircle of men, of dead men. The blue eyes were blanker than usual. The blood-strained, bullet-ridden bodies bore terrible wounds. Yet they still stood and moved and obeyed orders. Corpse discipline. They are the elite of my elite, said Kriegsleiter. Complete mental linkage. They are sustained by my will. While I live, they cannot die. He turned over a body with his foot. It was the warlord, staring sightlessly at the sky. Kriegsleiter looked at the other corpses, the ones that had not risen. All the others are dead. Once again you have turned up to ruin everything, Doctor. Soon I too shall die, but not before I have seen you and your companion torn to pieces. The little army of corpses began lurching towards them. Quick, Ace! The tower! yelled the Doctor. They sprinted across the courtyard and ducked inside. Ace helped the Doctor to close the great door and drop the locking bar. Wait here for me! shouted the Doctor, and hold them off whatever you do. How? wailed Ace. It's no use shooting them, they're already dead. Try grenades! yelled the Doctor, and disappeared down the stairs. Ace remembered the grenade on helmet demonstration. She rushed over to the arm section, found the grenade box, and lugged it across the floor to a position near the staircase. She saw a smoking line moving up from the bottom of the door. It moved up, across, and down again, tracing the shape of a small door within the larger one. Kriegsleiter's laser cane. When the door section was complete, it was kicked from the outside and fell inwards. A black shape blocked the hole, and Ace pulled the pin on her first grenade and lobbed it through. The explosion blew the black shape away, but another took its place. Another shape, another grenade, another explosion. Ace lost count of the number of times the sequence was repeated. Soon the number of grenades in the box was getting low. She fumbled a grenade and one of the black shapes got through. The next grenade blew it to wriggling fragments. But another shape was through and another. As they lurched towards her, Ace grabbed the last few grenades and retreated towards the stairs. Somehow she knew she couldn't bear it if one of them touched her. They were all through now, Krieg Slighter as well. He raised his cane, Ace threw her last grenade, and something grabbed her arm. It was the Doctor. Come on, up to the top, he yelled. Ace head up the stone staircase after him, trying not to think of the dragging feet behind her. Suddenly she became aware that the whole building was shaking. What's going on, Professor? They've got an atomic reactor down in the basement. Can't leave that sort of thing lying around in the late thirties. Far too anachronistic. So what did you do? As if in answer to her question, the whole tower started shuddering. Threw it into overload, yelled the doctor. How long have we got? The doctor opened the hatchway to the roof. Well, it's hard to be precise. It's a very primitive installation, but judging by the sounds it's making... Not very long, he hauled Ace out onto the roof of the tower. Suddenly she realised the full horror of the situation. Hold it, Professor. We're being chased to the top of a tower by a gang of zombies, and your solution is to blow the tower up with an atomic bomb? That's right. It seemed pretty neat to me. What's wrong? The whole tower seemed to be swaying now. A crack appeared in the parapet and a chunk fell off. Professor! screamed Ace. We are standing on the top of the tower, the one you are blowing up! Not for long, said the doctor. He produced a device like a keyring and pressed a control. Nothing happened. The doctor looked worried. A huge crack appeared in the stone roof of the tower and some more bits of the parapet fell off. A deep rumble filled the air and the whole tower was lashing to and fro like a ship's mast in a gale. Well, Professor, screamed Ace. The doctor frowned thoughtfully. He shook the keyring. Putting his fingers in his mouth, he gave a piercing whistle. The TARDIS materialised in midair, hovering about three feet above the ground. Blast, said the doctor. It's always the little things. Fishing out his key, he said, give me a leg up, Ace. 
Ace bent down. The doctor put his feet on her shoulders and she slowly straightened up. The doctor reached for the keyhole and the ground rippled under her feet. Ace staggered and the doctor fell against the floating TARDIS. Keep still, girl, he yelled. Ace tried, but it was like doing a balancing act on a trampoline. Somehow the doctor managed to get the key in the lock, open the door and scramble inside. He knelt in the open doorway, leaning out at a dangerous angle, reaching down for her. Ace couldn't quite reach his outstretched hand. I can't do it, Professor, she called. You'll have to go without me. Jump, shouted the doctor. Just grab my hand. I tell you, I can't. Suddenly the hatchway burst open. It was Kriegsleiter, zombie soldiers behind him. Ace leapt in the air like a terrified kangaroo. The doctor grabbed her wrists, hauling her up and through the door with amazing ease. Close the door, shouted the doctor once she was securely in. Ace turned to close the door and caught a glimpse of Kriegsleiter emerging from the hatch. The vibration of the tower must have triggered off some of the conventional explosives. Suddenly, a great tongue of fire belched out from the hatchway engulfing him. There, bathed in the flame, Ace saw, just for a second, a young man, tall, dark and satanically handsome, reaching up to her. The door closed. The TARDIS dematerialised, and they were gone. The Drakensberg Tower disappeared in a roaring pillar of fire. When the flames died down, a cloud hung over the area for days. People who stayed on after the catastrophe sickened and died. Eventually, the local people said the place was cursed, and they all moved away. Drakensberg became an abandoned ruin in a region of desolation. <laughs>